Good morning. Stop for a little, uh, stretch the legs and, uh, try not to miss the sunrise. This is a location we've been to before. Uh, Termo, California. There's the, uh, where they hide the stuff that they put down on the roads. Like I said earlier in a video, they use volcanic rock instead of salt or sand. That is Termo, California. Uh, it's a weird name, right? Termo? Uh, it's, it's short for Terminus. Uh, there used to be a railroad out here. And uh, this is kind of where... I think he caught air off of that one. <laughs> Uh, anyway, this is where a railroad would stop, and uh, they had a warehouse here, and, and, you know, if you look close, there's a kind of a where, you know, yeah, like a warehouse, and uh, most recently, it's closed now, but there used to be a general store and a bar and stuff, but we are trucking along one of my favorite shortcuts in Northern California. This is the Termo grasshopper road and today i'm going to give you a review i'm going to let you ride along with me and uh please forgive the noises of my truck my seat has a weird squeak to it right now my seat's kind of old and uh like i said we're just going to set up the camera and uh i give you a little rolling review of the road how about that So yeah, let's hit this road. All right, hopefully you kids are ready. This road that we're on, I've referred to as a shortcut. I don't know if it's much of a shortcut. Uh, I haven't timed it. Um, I mentioned a little earlier about the noise my seat makes. right there so you're gonna hear that I do apologize I tend to sit upright with a lot of weight on the back of the seat um, and like I said the seats old in this truck so like I said you, you must forgive me for my my imperfections uh, this is the termo grasshopper road and it's going to lead us over towards the 139 so we can go north. The load that I'm hauling today is very heavy. So I'm not going to be uh, making good time. And since I can't make good time today, I will try to provide you with a good time. By cleaning the windshield and uh, trucking. This truck has a 13 speed, best transmission it's ever made. It is a Freightliner Cascadia. It's approximately a 2019, I think. <laughs> I should know these things. I don't own the truck though, so I don't know these things. Uh, 2019 Cascadia, Freightliner Cascadia. Uh, with a DD-15. Uh, it's uncorked, so there's no horsepower restriction or anything like that. Uh, I, I am speed limited to 65 miles an hour. We are in the state of California, which uh, imposes a 55 mile an hour speed limit on trucks. Anything towing is 55 miles an hour, which is a very dumb and antiquated law. And... Uh, Honestly, it makes the roads a lot more unsafe because you got speed differential between uh, the normal citizen population and commercial traffic. You want traffic to all flow at the same speed. I got to put some air in my seat because this road is not friendly to those of us that like to sit low and low in the seat. Uh, if you watch my channel, you would have seen. A description of how my seat works you know you can put air in it and get comfortable on the road it's 
far as comfort is concerned, this road is not comfortable. It's not a major highway, so there isn't much maintenance on it. In the winter time, they don't they don't bother plowing it or anything like that. So I only take this road if I'm sure the weather is going to be okay. And as you can see on the horizon, we're heading towards some uh, some inclement weather. Uh, if you look at the shape of those clouds, there's a lot of wind. You know, the clouds don't really look fluffy. They look like they're, they're being squished a little bit. And uh, I can hear a little bit of wind outside. And it'll probably get worse before we get to the end of this road. The end of this road will be Highway 139. Uh, close to the town of Aden, I believe. A-D-I-N. There ain't much for towns and stuff out here. Up here on the hill, you'll see on the left, there's a building with a green roof. And I thought, is that some is that some dude's mansion or something? Because it's, it's on a beautiful spot overlooking the valley and stuff. You can't really see from the camera position. Uh, that's an elementary school that's been abandoned. Like, they must have spent millions of dollars on that. And it's abandoned. Like, still got the playground equipment out and stuff, and it's just completely abandoned. I don't think there's enough kids out here to support a school. And it, it don't look like a private school or nothing, but I, I, just, I drive by that quite often. I think it's weird. Uh, this is cattle country, so you have to be on the lookout for cows on the road. Uh, cows are, are weird. Like at night, they'll 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 come and stand on the road because the road's a little bit warmer than the desert. Uh, so it's very dangerous to drive through here at night. I do apologize for the uh, truck rattling in the background. It's not specifically the truck rattling. It's my microwave. I forgot to pull the little uh, the little roundy round dish. And uh, watch out for roadkill. Um, that noise you just heard is my lane departure warning. So if I get anywhere near the fog line, which I'm not going to try to do here because there ain't much of a fog line. Uh, well, I'll try it here on the center since there's no traffic. Right there. That tells me that I crossed the line. If you do that enough, management will give you a call and say, hey, you fall asleep, we can see you on camera. Uh, so it's it's quite annoying to be a semi-truck driver anymore, especially if you're somebody like me that has millions of miles experience, many years in the industry. Also, I was a diesel mechanic. It, it's those little nanny state bullshit that they put in semi-trucks that's really annoying. and. One thing that does make me happy is that this technology has trickled down to the normal consumer cars. So right now you can't you can't go and buy yourself a brand new Toyota or a brand new GMC or a brand new car of any kind and not have these little nanny state uh, too cl too close to the shoulder of the road and beeps at you or uh, or it has lane keep assist and stuff. So uh, it, it used to suck. I, I, I absolutely hate it, but now that the general population has to suffer through it too, I, I feel better about it. Most of the turns on this road are, uh, you, you can do them at the speed limit. There's only a couple turns where you need to slow down to about 40, 45 miles an hour. Uh, my friends that like to ride motorcycles would get a kick out of this road as you can see it's pretty desolate uh, if, you, if you look closely you know in the distance and off to the sides there's a couple ranches and stuff people people that live out here want to be left alone and I always <laughs> when I when I hear people complain about California uh, keep in mind like California is not Los Angeles. Uh, California is not Sacramento. 
there's there's places like this where I could easily lie to you right now and say that we're in Montana. I could I could tell you right now that we're in Idaho. I, I could tell you right now that I could I could picture this road in in 15 different states. But no, this is extreme northern California, northeastern California, north of Susanville, south of Alturas. The, uh, the good part of California. Uh, out here, of course, there's there's not much politics other than, you know, make sure the water stays on and the cattle stay fed. You won't see too many, uh, you know, Republican or Democrat declarations or anything. You won't, you know, every once in a while you'll see a flag but people out here generally want to be left alone. And that's why you've heard about the state of Jefferson. Uh, they want to take all this land that's in the quiet area of California, the quiet area of Oregon, uh, I, I guess now even parts of Idaho. They want to turn it into another state uh, and call it Jefferson. Which I think is a pretty good idea. Uh, because, you know, no matter what the politics are of California, it does trickle down to areas like this. Like, I, I will tell you that uh, farmers out here, uh, truck drivers that live out here, they don't like how much the EPA and how much go government oversight there is. These people want to be left alone. They want to raise their children, and they just want to be members of their own community. And, and the outside world uh, doesn't really matter. It really doesn't matter, and, I, and I, I, I see that and I admire it. I really do. We're uh, we're definitely heading into a storm. If you if you see in the last three miles here, we went from kind of kind of partly cloudy to mostly cloudy. The uh, the morning sun is not shining on us anymore. It'd be shining on our backs. We are heading northwest right now. This is the Termo Grasshopper Road. I don't know if it picks up just how bumpy it is, but like I said, I've got plenty of air in my seat. And, uh, you know, you, you keep loose, you don't tense up, and we're on the lookout for cows. So if you see any, make sure you scream and yell. Make sure I'm paying attention. We're at cruising speed right now which is approximately 1,400 RPM in top gear, 13th gear. Hang on for the bump. Those are cattle guards. Uh, cattle won't walk over those. Although I have seen, watch YouTube long enough, you'll see everything, but the cows out here, they don't, uh, they don't try walking over those. But look at this valley. Nice straight road got rolling hills in the background it's kind of a shame that it's uh, kind of overcast and gray with a little bit of a rain shower going on not much of a rain shower you'll, you'll see me hit the wipers every once in a while but all my uh, all, all my motorcycle community buddies would probably appreciate seeing this video we like to ride on motorcycles and just kind of get lost in the scenery is another reason I like the career that I've chosen because I have seen the entire country. I have been on every interstate, uh, been on most highways, seen every major city. I've I've been everywhere, and I often joke that you know Johnny Cash sings that he's been everywhere. Uh, now I've I've been more places than Johnny Cash. The problem with traveling as a truck driver though is yes I've been everywhere I just haven't seen it up close
and that's why it's important for me to ride motorcycles because when you're on a motorcycle you get to experience the world uh, you, you get to smell you get to smell the sights you get the you get to sight the smells <laughs> You get to feel the environment because you're not locked in a cage with air conditioning, right? Uh, there's two things that people get wrong. Air conditioning is the heating and cooling of air for comfort, air conditioning. Some people say air conditioning is just cooling the air, like you turn your air conditioner on in your car and it's cold. That's not necessarily the correct terminology because your car has heating and air conditioning, right? I don't understand why they don't just call it heating or cooling. Uh, proper, the proper terminology would be HVAC or HVAC control. So heating, ventilation, air conditioning. Although it should be air cooling. What do I know? I'm a failed mechanic turned into a lackluster truck driver. A horrible motorcycle rider, terrible YouTuber. Uh, we're not going to talk about my uh, stint as a brain surgeon or a porn star. And as you can see, we don't have too much traffic. Did you kids count how many cars we've passed? Oh, big bump. Uh, we have not passed any cars, but there was a car that went the other way. I believe it was a silver Ford of some sort. We can always uh, find it and uh, post a picture. We've got a bunch of horses out here. We've got a horse farm. Hello, horses. Those aren't wild horses. They, they all look real healthy. Uh, so this area of California and not too far from Nevada, we do have a lot of wild horses. And uh, sometimes they don't look too healthy. Big bump. But the last couple of years, you know, we've had some good weather. And uh, they, they don't talk about drought too often anymore. And uh, it seems like the wild horses are, are healthier and uh, way more plentiful. They're around Reno. People feed them. So they're not really afraid of people anymore. And it's become a real hazard, especially on roads like this in the middle of the night. Because like I was saying about the cows, they'll stand on the, uh, the road in the middle of the night to keep warm. Well, horses will do it too. If you look close, it looks like it's raining up on those uh, on those hills in front of us. So we might be in for a little surprise. If you were riding a motorcycle, what would you think? Do I keep riding or or do I turn around? Do I do I stop? Whip open a map? And and try to find a better route, you know. Uh, by the way, there's no sense in opening up your cell phone right now because there is no phone reception. There are many places along my route where I don't have phone reception. And if I were to break down, I would have to either just sit and wait for somebody to help me or I would have to hike 10 miles, you know, hike to the top of one of these mountains and, and hope that I get phone reception. Um, so it's smart to have extra clothes, extra water, uh, a quote unquote uh, bug out bag, which is funny because that's exactly what I have. And the security officers at work are like, why is your bag so heavy? And it's like, because I go through areas that are, could be life-threatening if I break down. <laughs> so 
as simple as that. So, we're coming towards the end of the road. We got about one more mile. I want to thank you for riding with me. Uh, I do apologize if I blabber too much. Because uh, maybe you just wanted to see this road and not hear me uh, pontificate at random. Looks like we might have uh, a trucker buddy up there. Is he going to turn left and come towards us? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. We got ourselves a trucker buddy. Woohoo! Got your bright lights on, son. He was driving a Freightliner Cascadia as well. Okay, kids, so that's the end of Grasshopper Road. As you can see from the sign, we are going to be making a right and going towards Aiden. 